And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are back. Thank you, William Hamilton Morrow III, for doing promo, as always. And now um, you're watching the following video of Progressive Discussions, coming to you from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. I'm here with the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Yeah. We are the kings of progressive talk. Uncensored, unrehearsed, ad-libbed, broadcasting at its finest. The Proven King. Oh, I'm trying to get put my crown on so my hair doesn't stick up in the middle. How was it look? Mostly crown? Yeah. Was last, I see much here. Was last week I pushed it down too far and I had a the puff of my hair was showing. Alright. Well, puff, puff. Cream puff. Who is that loud mouth jabroni out there yapping away? Those are people across the street, not out there. Over here. Out. Oh. Uh. Alvaro. That's Mr. Alvaro. Okay, back to the show. They have a big screen TV outside. Where they can it's sit around and watch television. Is it on wheels? I don't know what it's on. I just know it's out there. Well, if it's something they had a carry bodily it's it's stupid it's stupid unless it's well, on he has to be out there because his wife has Alzheimer's and she's inside and you know you mean she's like drives him crazy well she don't do that I mean you know, taking care of her but you know him with his friends and everybody making noise in there not a good thing. So they stay outside. Oh, that's the reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all. All right, let's, let's continue. I don't want By to. all accounts, Ben Carson. Ben Carson. Achievements from humble beginnings to successful neurosurgeon are worthy of boasting. But there is a difference between boasting and making stuff up. It's called lying. Stories last week, first on Politico and then confirmed in the New York Times, upended Carson's long-held contention that he had been offered a full ride to West Point. It never happened. Nope. The man who would like to be the next commander-in-chief played fast and loose with the truth about being offered a spot at one of the most prestigious military academies in the nation. <coughs> Why his conservative base isn't screaming for him, not just to get off the debate stage, but to withdraw from the presidential race is beyond me. Carson has said a lot of loopy stuff. Loopy and loony. My personal favorite was that men go into prison straight and come out gay. They used to say that in the Navy about submarine, uh, submariners. According to Carson, the nation's prison system is just one big gay bar. Well, they're infatuated, uh, fixated with homosexuality. They have the big hang-up. Where a new <laughs> arrival is presented to inmates with the words, This Bud's for you! Yeah. 
There's something comical about Carson's contention that the Egyptians built the pyramids to store grain and not to bury the pharaohs. Actually, he didn't say the Egyptians. He said Joseph built the pyramids to store the grain for the seven years of plenty to handle the seven years of not plenty that God prophesied. But I don't believe Joseph was around at the time the pyramids were built. No, he wasn't. Okay. He wasn't even conceived. While scientists and historians have no proof of such a thing, nor am I familiar with any religious tract that suggests the story of Joseph and his multi-colored coat was really a parable about corn subsidies for farmers. I am willing to allow Carson his ridiculous opinion on Joseph, Pharaoh, and the grain. But there is something truly disturbing about committing to print the claim you were offered a spot in West Point when it turns out you never even applied to West Point. And to save some readers the time and energy, there is a big difference between claiming you could have gone to West Point and telling Americans if you want to keep your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor. Because somehow every criticism of a Republican gone amok opens a window for someone to yell either Obamacare or Benghazi. There are more people signing up for Obamacare. Seven point one million than ever. There, there is left, left and right. They're signing up. People, people love it. I mean. Uh, it's health care that they never had before. Our military is more than a poetic line of defense. It is men and women who are willing to die for their country. Willing to serve in combat fighting wars not of their choosing. There are few callings as selfless as joining the military. So it irks me that Carson lied. Which, of course, leads to the next question about the good doctor. He claims to have been a youthful rebel without a cause. But with a claw, as in hammer. Carson said he was once prone to fits of violence. Trying to assault his mother with a hammer. In an argument about clothing. He also recounts incidents of violence in school, hitting a schoolmate in the head with a lock, and trying to stab another. Oh, she. But the blade broke against the boy's belt buckle. This is the man that became a neurosurgeon. He became a Christian. And now he's no longer violent or pathological. You mean he's Jesus a, saved him. You mean he's a conservative Christian? That's correct. Yeah, oh yeah, they they really know their Bible. Carson now says the last victim was a close relative. Good thing Carson didn't get sent to prison. <clears throat> he would have ended up gay. And then there where would his conservative political base be now in San Francisco? They would have. They would have. They would have given Carson a different kind of colonoscopy, Doctor Carson. There is little to laugh about here because Carson is jumping to the top of Republican national polls, and there is climate change unrelated to fossil fuel in America. A wind is blowing hot against the media that is supposedly all liberal and out to get Republicans. Reporting that Carson wrote a book, in a book, excuse me, that he was accepted to West Point, but was not, is somehow biased, 
while conservative claims that Obama is Muslim and born in Kenya were always credible. For now, let's assume Carson's story of his wild youth are correct. Is this the stuff of a future president? Lots of people have life transformations, but trying to hit your mother with a hammer because of a disagreement over clothing? Trying to stab a, 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 school, a schoolmate? Donald Trump, <clears throat> the avatar of reticence, tweeted on Thursday, the Carson story is either a total fabrication or, if true, even worse, trying to hit mother over the head with a hammer or stabbing a friend. Trump nails it. Pun not intended. If Carson is telling the whole truth, and perhaps we will never know his alleged victims may have changed their names. He is a psychopath waiting to erupt. Dr. Carson and Mr. Hyde. And if he is lying about that, what else is he lying about? And what else will he lie about if he uh, ever won any election in the future? Don't expect debate panelists on Tuesday night to ask Carson such a question, because after the debacle of the last debate, such a question would be booed down by the raucous audience and dismissed by the candidates as a gotcha question. From my experience, you can only have a gotcha if the person you ask has been less than forthcoming. There are responsible Republicans running for president. Where? Which ones? Name one. One is nuttier than the other. They just aren't catching fire with probable Republican voters. At least not yet. Too many Republicans apparently like Carson's meek sounding voice and demeanor. Maybe if he would go all Jack Nicholson in The Shining on stage, voters would think differently. Here's Johnny. In another time, Carson's admitted lie about West Point, plus his tale about trying to strike his mother with a hammer, would have made him an unattractive candidate. Not now. Yes, you go into prison straight and come out gay, the pyramids were built to hold the grain. I was offered a free ride to West Point. Ben Carson isn't nuts. The people positively responded to this tripe are. Still, I watch, I will watch the Fox Business Network's debate, <coughs> which is over, by the way. And I have a suggestion for NBC if it manages to reinstate its Republican presidential debate now in the mothballs after, CNBC, after the CNBC fiasco last month. There's really only one moderator who could be a foil to Ben Carson. Brian Williams. Donald Trump will continue to have a lot to tweet about. Brian Williams lied, remember, that he was in the uh, the war area when he was doing his, his reports for NBC, ooh, ooh, he was lying. When they had like a, a video screen behind him of a, of a war c taking place? And no, he, he just said it. He uh, just said it in, in a book or whatever, and, you know. Well, the U.S. media um, is a lot like the Republican Party. They both have that one thing in common. Uh, they lie and lie often. You know, and um, 
<clears throat> I just want to salute the state of Colorado for um, having uh, putting it in the next uh, election, putting the vote on a, a universal single payer health care system. So, um, good for you, Colorado. First uh, legalize uh, medicinal and recreational marijuana, and now the first state to vote on uh, single-payer universal health care, which hopefully will have a domino effect with the other states. The article talks of Republicans complaining of the power of special interests and an unavoidable legislative map, which is code for gerrymandered districts. That is truly laughable. Republicans wrote the book on a political process that promoted political action committees spending obscene amounts of money on candidates they favor. Additionally, Republican majority legislatures have gerrymandered districts throughout the country to guarantee Republican re-election. <coughs> Governor Christie is famous for blaming others for his failure to effectively govern. They don't listen to me, are his watchwords. Snow White's wicked witch looked in the mirror and asked, who is the fairest of them all? The governor looks in the mirror and sees his failed record as governor. Yeah, it should crack like, like when Herman Munster looked in the mirror. Oh, you handsome devil, you, and he used to crack. He is no longer electable for any public office, especially that of president. For that reason, he would be the Democrats' dream candidate. I am a Catholic. And also a citizen of the United States. And as the latter, I understand that an important aspect of freedom of religion is freedom from religion. Yes. <clears throat> to satisfy those who are upset and not discriminate. Starbucks would be required to ascertain the religious affiliation of every customer and pour their coffee in an appropriate denominational cup. You know, with all the serious crises uh, that we have today in the country and the world, people are still talking about the damn Starbucks cups. My Jewish friends should not be required to walk around with a cup commemorating Christmas. Who the fuck cares? Well, I mean, have a multi-religious, uh, multi-cultural cup. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. These enraged Catholics would certainly be offended by receiving a cup celebrating Rosh Hashanah. <clears throat> or maybe Ramadan. Oh, boy. Just have a pretty cup with a menorah and a Christmas decoration and um, Islamic um, well Islam is not in favor of, of images they don't That's like correct. they do not like images or relics of any That's kind correct no. the same indignant Catholic who would demand a non Ramadan cup has no problem forcing the followers of other religions to drink out of a Christmas cup. What about a Happy Holidays cup? No, that's what Starbucks was doing. They don't like that. Well, happy... They don't like you saying Happy Holidays. They want you to say Merry Christmas. Well, I got news for them. The American customer and the American mainstream is made up of many different kinds of people from many cultures and religions. And they all have the same green money to spend. You know what I mean? 
So you got to respect them all. You, you can't be shoving uh, your faith down their throats. Well, your faith is actually what they are doing because Christ has never been in Christmas. He was never there. Thank you. He was never there. He, he never told anybody to celebrate anyone's birthday. He was never born in December. I, you know, I, there are idiots on my friends list that say, we, ah, we got to put Christ back into Christmas. Yeah. He was never there, you stupid asses. You know, this is proof that a, a, a lot of Americans just sit their lazy asses in front of the mainstream media boob tube and whatever they're fed, they they absorb. Tradition. And that's it. They, it's all tradition. They don't mm -hmm. research anything. Mark 7, verse 7. You make me of no effect through your traditions. Says it right there in the Bible. Yeah, not just Christmas, the, the, the pagan Easter. Ishtar. I mean, it's all the same. They're all based on paganism. And they're all perpetuated with the nauseating Christmas carols, whatever you want to call them, Christmas songs and stupid commercials, uh, I think by the Zionist American retail industry to, to, to get people to part with their money. Uh, um, you know, stupid songs. Tweedly D, dum da dum D. What the fuck? You know, I mean, it's sickening. I say the same thing every year, but you know what's the most sickening about holiday commercials? That is involving all the fine jewelry commercials that are so nauseating, like from Zales Jeweler or Jerry. Jerry. You know, you know, suckering people to think there's something special in wasting your money on a diamond which is not a true investment spending thousands on a, a, a woman and and if you don't do it you're not you know your love is questioned your mm -hmm. true love is questioned mm -hmm. or you're not you're 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 neglecting her your your significant other or some and you get complaints you know, it's all tied into materialism. You know what I mean? Materialism. <laughs> like Ber Ber Bernie Sanders quoted Pope Francis about the new golden calf. Mm. Money worship. Materialism. Mm. That's what it's all about. But not merely a cup. That's just a nod to the holiday. They want what they deem true symbols of Catholicism like Santa and that great apostle Rudolph. I like Kr Krampus much better. I wonder how many of these people who are demonizing the Starbucks cup while sipping the coffee outside a football stadium on a Sunday were anywhere near a church that weekend. Why don't they complain of the fact that they're spending seven dollars on a cup of coffee? Ah. instead of what the cup looks like. Some treat commandments as suggestions, yet become hyper-religious because of a cup. It's not about getting a Christmas cup. It's about not forcing a cup and religion down the throats of others. That leaves a bad taste. Yeah. Mixing, mixing church with state. And those well, that the are Republicans part, do it all the time, don't those, they? Those that are part of the church that in, interfere in politics should pay taxes. That is correct, sir. But they don't. You know, uh, it's... Uh, but the and, middle class and the poor does. And the right wing continues to claim that the United States is a Christian nation. No, it's not. Our founding fathers uh, specify that in detail. And it is in treaties, the treaty with Tripoli. John Adams was president at the time. 
some person thought that to to criticize the fact that John Adams did not actually say that that it appears in the treaty was somehow doing away with that sorry Charlie it's there no matter who said it thank you obesity is still rising among American adults despite more than a decade of public awareness campaigns and other efforts to get people to watch their weight and women have now overtaken men in the obese category. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I see it all the time. For the past several years, experts thought the nation's alarming decades-long rise in obesity had leveled off, but the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said in a report on Wednesday that the obesity rate has climbed to nearly 38% of adults, up from 32% about a decade earlier. And I'm sure the sugar, the sugar industry knows of, a, of, a, of this and plays a huge role in it. They, you know, these are their customers. This is a striking finding and suggests that a situation that was thought to be stable is getting worse. An authority at North Carolina's Barry Barry pa, uh, at North Carolina's university, a Barry Popkin urged caution, saying the participants selected for the study may not have been representative of the nation as a whole. Experts said they had no explanation for why the obesity rate appears to be rising. The report, based primarily on a survey conducted in 2013-2014, also found a tipping of the scales toward women. Obesity rates for men and women had been roughly the same for about a decade. But in the new report, the rate was significantly higher for women at 38% compared with 34% for men. Obesity, which means not merely overweight, but seriously overweight, is considered one of the nation's leading public health problems. <coughs> Until the early 1980s, only about one in six adults were obese. But the rate climbed dramatically until it hit about one in three about ten years ago. The new figures come from a regular government survey that involves not only interviewing people with their girth, about their girth, but about actually weighing them. Because of that, it is considered the gold standard for measuring the nation's waistline. However, it has about 5,000 participants each year, far fewer than some other federal surveys that ask about weight. Generally, it can be harder to draw reliable national conclusions from a smaller survey. The widening gap between men and women seems to be driven by what's happening amongst blacks and Hispanics. Obesity rates for white men and white women remain very close, but for blacks. The female obesity rate has soared to 57%, far above the male rate of 38%. The gender gap is widening among Hispanics to 46%. This has been a Mega Life 21 production. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the Newsletter Censored in the mainstream media or the press. 
This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hi, I'm William Morrow. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye.